before you head out onto the water with your stand-up paddleboard, it's really important you plan your paddle to help ensure you and your paddling buddies have a fun and safe sup session. Make sure you consider the following. The wind and the weather, your location, the tide or the river conditions, appropriate clothing, your personal flotation, communication and emergency, your equipment, and the correct leash. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about SUP equipment and what you need to get on the water safely when you go paddleboarding. What's great about SUP is its simplicity. You grab your paddle and board and off you go. But really, there is a few things you must take with you to make sure you're safe when you go on the water. Exactly what you take can vary depending on the type of paddling you're doing. For example, family fun with kids, exploration paddles, maybe a paddle downwind with friends. Where are you gonna be planning to paddle? How far from the shore are you going to be going? For example, along the coast, in a lake, a canal, or down a river? How long are you going to be going for also? For example, a quick paddle with friends, a full day paddle, or a multi-day adventure and the paddling conditions you're expecting during your paddle session as well. Obviously, you're likely to need less equipment when going for shorter paddles than longer paddles, but there is still some key items you should consider taking along with your board and your paddle. For all paddles, no matter what length, you should be looking at taking a leash, a PFD, a method of communication, the appropriate clothing, a dry bag, a snack, a drink, and possibly your sunglasses. Let's go over those pieces now in a bit more detail. If you haven't already watched our SUP safe video all about leashes, you'll find out which leash is best suit your type of paddling. But wearing a leash and having the correct attachment system to your body is a must. Looking at a PFD or a personal flotation device, whether it's for increased confidence on the water or just for emergency, make sure you wear a PFD. If you're unsure of what the options are, make sure you check out our SUP safe PFD video to find out more on that method of communication now this is important to raise an alarm if you get in trouble a whistle might be a sufficient method if you're paddling on a lake or close to shore but in most environments a mobile phone in a waterproof case is ideal just make sure it's well charged and if you're paddling more remote coastal locations where there's regular marine traffic and possibly limited phone signal you might want to consider a vhf just make sure you have the appropriate certification to use it Looking at clothing, remember to dress for being in the water as well as on it. You might not plan to fall in, you, but you never know. Extra layers in a waterproof jacket will ensure you prepare for any change in the weather. Check out our SUPSAFE video all about clothing if you want to find out which options will best suit you. Also, a hat is a good idea to keep warm or a sun hat to keep your sun off depending on what type of weather you're paddling in. A dry bag is ideal for storing any spare clothes as well as anything else you want to keep dry such as your wallet, car keys. Definitely if you're going for a slightly longer paddle you might want to consider taking a snack to help keep your energy levels up especially in case you spend longer on the water than anticipated. Taking a drink is also essential particularly on those warmer days as you can quickly get dehydrated out on the water. In colder climates, you might also want to consider taking a hot flask to keep you warm and your energy levels up. Sunglasses are also a good idea, just make sure you might need to tie them on. Polarized sunglasses are ideal as they allow you to see much more in the water. If you're exploring somewhere new, taking a map is recommended, either paper or electronic. Help to identify where you are as well as other safe landing locations in case there's a change of plan. Now, when it comes to longer paddles or when you're paddling in more remote locations, you should also consider taking these things too. A spare paddle. Now, paddles can break and having a spare paddle can make the difference between having a ruined day and a great day out. A three-piece paddle is ideal to tuck under the bungees of your board as a spare. Also, a roll of duct tape or sticky tape is a good idea to throw in the bottom of your dry bag because it is a very handy piece of equipment that's easy and light to keep in your bag just in case something happens. A small first aid kit is always great to have so you can sort stuff out out on the water until you get back onto the shore. If you're paddling an inflatable paddleboard, taking your pump and repair kit is actually a good idea also. When you're looking at multi-day adventures now, you might also want to carry these things also. A tent, a sleeping bag, stove, food, as well as extra safety equipment such as survival shelter, baby bag, and flares. You obviously need to make sure you can fit the equipment safely on your board. 
larger boards have more deck space and some boards have more bungees and tie downs than others. So depending on how much equipment you plan to take, make sure you have a suitable board to carry the weight. Dry bags are the best way to store your equipment to ensure it stays dry. Make sure all the equipment you take with you is in good working order and most importantly, make sure you know how to use it. And in some different disciplines in SUP, if you're surfing, we recommend you always wear a straight leash, not a coiled leash. And if you're paddling in white water or faster moving water, wearing a helmet is highly recommended. We hope you found this video informative and it's given you an idea of what type of equipment you should be taking when you go next paddleboarding to keep you safe out on the water. Please share this information with other stand-up paddleboarders to help keep everyone sub-safe on the water. Mm -hmm.